Hello everyone, I am Tassa, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War, the odd couple events in which the Mantis Mage is added to the game. So this week, most noteworthy thing is that we should be getting version 7.2 of Gems of War, likely this Tuesday, uh, around uh, like 8pm, 9pm Eastern Standard Time. Small chance it is today, but it's most likely going to be tomorrow. And there's a chance it's not this week, but it is a very, very high chance it's tomorrow around 8 or 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, definitely look forward to that. As far as what we know, they actually posted a little preview video on that. Uh, as far as what is actually in it, it can very much be summarized in UI changes. And they're essentially making dead ends and Underspire give more rewards with six new unique troops, as well as a little bit of extra loot that you can end up getting there, making it actually beneficial to potentially find dead ends uh, going forward in Underspire. So there's a bit of a buff to make sure hitting a complete dead end doesn't give you absolutely nothing. Anyways, as far as this week is concerned, uh, we got two new troops, one from the raid event and one right here, which ends up making the Heenum go up to 28 stars. Still not quite there yet, but a lot easier to hit those 10 and 20 star milestones if you still need them. Stock up on green purple arcanes here if you end up needing them. As far as your troop itself, it is pretty useless. It just creates a bunch of brown and yellow, both of which it does not use. It does have a little bit of yellow link to go with it, but it's just not going to do much. There's already similar troops to this that are better than it, and even those are kind of bad and pretty much never used. So similarly, this will never be used, unfortunately. And it's just going to be another thing to boost up the star level. As far as the event key drop table is concerned, it is okay. Uh, probably pretty skippable unless you're really looking for a particular thing. So if we go over here and go over to Drifting Sands. So everything you see here except for the following are in the drop table. So the things not in the drop table are the four troops from the Deep Hive. The uh, Topazarf, uh, which is only from the Dragon Eggs uh, drop table in the Soul Forge. And I think there was one other. Was that it? And that is it. Okay, so just those five are the only ones not in drop table. As far as what you're looking for, if you are opening keys, it is probably either... Uh, Scorpius or uh, Shabanu Vespera. Scorpius is used in some double kill double kill teams where you use it with a reality or anything else that can poison very quickly. And then you cast Scorpius, you cast Scorpius again, and boom, you won. It got buffed actually even more, not directly, but when Bane of Mercy came into the game, it can feed it purple directly while also cursing the entire enemy team, meaning none of them will have immune to poison. And combined in your Ur reality, that makes it possible to poison pretty much everything in the entire game, unless they have like a Doom or Enrage Carandir or something similar, something that has immune to curse. But otherwise, it is very strong these days. I personally haven't been using it much because once you have everything in the game, there are slightly better options, but he is still capable of double killing within two single casts. And Bane of Mercy pretty much just gives him his first cast, so he just needs to find the mana for the second one. So really strong these days, uh, probably the strongest he's ever been. Though I personally still haven't really been using him, but still really strong. And Shabana of Despair, a little bit more of a gimmicky troop, but it gives you a lot of random status effects, particularly magic, of course. Uh, it can miss, but as long as you have a team that's remote, uh, pretty much like pure color, uh, you'll keep creating mostly that color. Uh, like, let's say you had like a pure like yellow team with most things only using yellow, uh, like a pure yellow weapon, pure yellow tr assisting troop, stuff like that. Then you'll end up creating almost entirely yellow from her three ability. One of them you get to choose, the other two will be completely random based on colors on your team. So if it was a pure yellow team, you would choose one of your troops that has pure yellow, and then hope that the other two also land on yellow, creating, in theory, at least uh, potentially, 27 yellow, or 18 yellow with 9 of another color. So when she works well, she works really well, but there's a lot of times where she'll create three different colors, depending on your team, including rolling on herself, which uh, is not ideal. Also, sometimes she just doesn't give you the magic you need, which of course the whole gimmick of using her is pretty much just to get infinite all stats, but particularly that magic stat. But overall, it's a pretty skippable week unless you're really looking to hit a star milestone for this kingdom. Uh, there isn't really much here to bother getting. Uh, Great Maul, uh, it's basically just outclassed completely by Iron Gut, uh, even though it is decent. And most other things here are pretty forgettable troops that are only used for like ever so occasionally as utility. Uh, like this for like the Thursday class event or something similar. But uh, and that and Dust Devil, of course. <laughs> Good old Dust Devil, but you could literally have him fully unupgraded and he'll work as long as he's fully traded for the Iron Hawk team, so... Yeah, you're mostly just looking for these two. Obviously, there are good other things in here, but they're not in event key drop table, like Topaz Arf, but that's in the uh, egg drop table, and Queen Beatrix, but that's in the underworld drop table, specifically for that of the Deep Hive, this one right here. So you would just go here, open some shards, and ideally you'd get the legend. That is not the legend, but you'd eventually get the legend at a 2.97% chance. Anyways, so... Other things, uh, before I forget, because I feel like I always forget to go over this, the Trials. So, Trials, as far as this week is concerned, I already reordered these into the correct order. Basically, Ba here, you want to sacrifice it. Uh, it does have Entangle to all of them, so you do ideally want to get one Entangle off before it ends up dying. But you basically just want to kill it off 
Next, Great Maul. Get this up as quickly as possible. Devour, ideally the sense. Skeletor, you'll gain the more stats from it. However, you could also go for something that's actually a damage threat. Uh, it really depends on where you're at. Uh, earlier fights, you might want to go for this. Later fights, definitely go for one of the damage for probably one in the middle too. Uh, Sand Shark, basically just RNG Devour. Um, you can cast this if you just want to randomly get a Devour. Uh, but you definitely want to prioritize getting the Great Maul up first. And then this last guy back here, he ends up giving a bunch of, to a random skill and an ally. Uh, and repeats it a second time. But the most important thing here is he summons a random Drifting Sands troop. Uh, we had a mechanic similar to this the other week where we had like infinite uh, resummon. And this is really, really, really good. Um, you could just replace out the Bahir for anything else in Drifting Sands that is ideally better and go from there. You can use Bahir in a slightly safer spot, even try to sacrifice the Great Maul. Not in that it sacrifices, but in the sense that you try to get the Devour before they kill you. But personally, I feel like it's going to be a little bit safer just having Bahir up here. Uh, it's nice to have his Entangle, but it's not really going to be required unless you have really low stats. But even then, um, you just want to get your Great Maul up, keep it in a nice safe location, get its Devour, and then all your stats are their stats. So you can get all these stats right here onto your Great Maul. And regardless of your stats, you'll already be in a really good position to basically kill out the entire team. You just take a bunch of skull pokes, have this thing die out, and then you have a proper team. Uh, this is mostly just here as a meat shield so that Great Maul has enough time to get full mana so that you can go win the battle. And Sand Shark's your backup plan for Devour. Uh, you shouldn't depend on this, but if you're in a sticky situation, it'll be your backup plan. 25% uh, chance per cast, which is pretty low, but if it lands it, then you're pretty much set. It's like if you just cast a Great Maul, essentially, just without the mana accumulation. And just as your super backup plan when you do all your summons, just to make sure you have a team. Uh, though, make sure not to block your Great Maul, as a lot of times you might actually want to not cast it uh, once your bot here goes down, assuming you already have your Devour off, as you will get substantially more value from Great Maul Skulls than you will from whatever summon you end up getting there. So um, you could even potentially sacrifice him if you wanted to. Uh, do it more like this if you truly wanted to. It really just depends how you want to do it. Uh, it's a lot safer this way. However, um, this combined with Entangle, combined with just Great Maul doing everything, you can also just sacrifice this. The only big issue with this is he is blocking on yellow. Whereas if you do Bahir, he's blocking on nothing as far as the Great Maul is concerned. So I'm personally going with Bahir, but you can go the other way around. But your core team is just Great Maul into Sand Shark, and that's it. That's your entire team. Anyways, uh, so next thing. As far as the, uh, actually, not that, board event. So, we have the raid boss this week. So, as far as raids are concerned, uh, we have two times magic on the raid troop, as we have been lately. It also has two times score, so definitely make sure to use it. Uh, it's pretty much required, so you can double up on your score. As far as options are concerned, uh, Beatrix spam, Topaz spam, uh, basically your two main options. Either just spam a billion Beatrix if you uh, don't have Topazes, and if you do have Topazes, you can put a couple Topazes in there and go down either route. Those are your main two options. Uh, as far as uh, killing everything. Uh, Beatrix for infinite loop into itself, as well as infinite resummon off this new weapon, and Topaz for uh, slightly quicker burst damage, uh, if you have the mana accumulation for it, like off of the um, Drifting Sands weapon, that one blue-red one, which we'll get to when we get to the Soul Forge. But that's pretty much the game plan. Just run either of those two damage sources. Queen Beatrix is the more accessible one, Topaz being the harder one, but if you've already gotten the Gem Dragon, you might have two or three of them laying around, or at least one. Uh, so you will be able to go and utilize that then, potentially. As far as weekly events are concerned, this Tuesday we hopefully have, and should have, the version 7.2 patch, bringing in some UI updates, making it so Dead Ends and Underspire are actually rewarding, and bringing in six new troops, as well as a few other tweaks. Uh, aside from that, uh, this Tuesday we'll have the faction event for Beatrix, or for uh, Deep Hive, I mean, um, so you'll be able to go and, well, you can throw shards at it at any point, but um, you'll be able to go and uh, do that. Uh, it's a brown-green? Yeah, brown-green restriction. Uh, Wednesday we have ourselves the... I actually forget which one the ability goat is for. I want to say wild folk, but that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I'm almost, I'm pretty sure that's the wild folk pet. I actually don't remember which one the ability goat is for. This Thursday is for uh, the Clash Trials for Dervish. Dervish is a pretty bad hero class, but it is noteworthy in one thing. It has the highest dodge chance of any hero class. A 30% and 20%. Uh, though that is not 50%. I forget what the percent comes out to. But it's like a low 40-something percent. Like a 41, 42 or something. Uh, because they both uh, trigger independently, not together. But it's still the highest dodge chance of any hero class in the entire game. However, this is so situational that it's not really ever used for that purpose. Uh, you're better off just using, you know, other good hero classes. And this Friday, we got a Vault Event. Of course, Vault Event. Gosh, it feels like we just had a Vault Event. But yeah, we just have the Vault Event again. They happen really common now. Which is great, because they're great loot. So, uh, yeah, definitely make sure to get on that grind. Uh, get yourself uh, hundreds of uh, vault keys, because I have, like, none right now, and I need some more. So we'll be stocking up on them this weekend, of course, with all the standard team, Dust Devil, Quick Kill, Rowan, Quick Kill, all the normal stuff. 
Anyways, as far as Soul Forge is concerned, uh, let me double check here. Da, 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 da. I actually forgot to check this earlier. Do we have anything? Oh, Hiking Iron Gut. Yes, we have something. Yes, get Hiking Iron Gut. If you don't have Hiking Iron Gut, you should probably try leaving this week with Hiking Iron Gut if you can. Uh, if you want to do the Underworlds, not Underspire, but Underworld, though I guess it could help with Underspire too. Uh, the only once when it comes to Zation. But if you need help with Underworld specifically, uh, this thing is so ridiculously good. Uh, it has Devour Rate based on its attack value. And while your attack might be a little bit low initially, uh, you have higher attack overall in Underworld. On top of that, once you get your first Devour, you will have way more than 100 attack, meaning that you will devour absolutely everything therefore. So uh, you probably see me mentioning this, uh, or will you be mentioning when one of the teams, when we go over all the teams uh, for the week. Uh, they're, it's just really good for devouring things, and it scales all the way to any stats. They could have a thousand all stats, and this will still be a really good option. And if you combine it with Curse off of either Catharyx or any other thing that you want to do Curse with, uh, you'll have access to uh, devouring everything as well, because there is not anything in Underworld currently that has immune to Curse. So uh, even if they have immune to devour, they will no longer have it anymore, and you'll be able to go devour everything. So that's pretty much the game plan with him. Really, really great if you're lucky to basically just get 500 in all Underworld to start working towards that, or just need help working towards any higher level for there. Really great option if you don't already have it. Uh, also, one other really noteworthy thing, Tesla is finally back. Uh, I sometimes mention it as an early game team, even though it's a little bit hard to get. However, go get Tesla. <laughs> she won't be available until next year again, most likely. So uh, definitely make sure to get her now. If you are a newer player, uh, actually, forget that Iron Guide even exists. Uh, if you're a newer player and don't have Tesla, you need to leave this week with one copy of Tesla, if not two. It is so absurdly good. It scales through the entire game. It deals a bunch of... Uh, so its base damage is nothing. It just deals eight scatter damage, uh, true scatter damage. However, it boosts based on all ally and enemy armor. Uh, the main part there being enemy armor. So regardless of how high the enemy is, you will scale through them throughout the entire game. Even if they have a thousand all stats, uh, Tesla will still be able to like three shot it or something. Even if your team has almost no stats at all. So really, really, really strong. She even got buffed earlier this year too, as if she needed it. <laughs> Not only did she get a pet that gave her five more all five more to all stats, which was mostly just for the five armor, uh, but she also ended up getting a rework to her boost ratio. Now having a, a three to one instead of what I believe previously was a four to one. So really, really great troop throughout the entire game, and definitely advise having at least a copy or two, uh, especially really early on in the game, as it'll just make everything so much easier. As far as weapons are concerned, I feel like there is an important one here this week. Uh, I know personally I haven't showed it yet, but we will be using this weapon this week. Uh, the Stinging Wind. It's pretty good for a lot of restrictions. Uh, not only is the Raid restricted to Drifting Sands, but also the Underworld, or Underspire I mean, is restricted to Drifting Sands. So a lot of stuff this week restricted to Drifting Sands. And you'll probably get a lot of value from this weapon this week, particularly. Uh, you won't use it beyond this week, but for this particular week, if you want to go pick it up, it's pretty cheap. Um, you can end up doing so, and it'll help out a lot with uh, those two game modes. Aside from that, uh, this you definitely want to get through the mode itself, which is 250 gems. Don't bother buying it here. Buy it from the raid shop for 250. I guess the other really big one, I guess, would be the Doomed Axe. Uh, Doomed Axe, most relevant thing about this is just a full AoE into Convert. Uh, great purple counter. Uh, sometimes used for Guild War, sometimes used for Tower of Doom. Uh, actually, never mind. You can't use it for Tower of Doom anymore. I forgot. <laughs> oh, I never even thought about that. You actually can't even use the Doom weapons outside of their initial event anymore in Dooms. You used to be able to for pretty good value, but now that you have to use whatever the new weapon is for the week, to, you know, in order to get double Doom kills, there is no point in using these in that mode, but it's still pretty good for other things. It's really good just burst damage weapon and everything. Uh, just you very rarely anymore will ever be able to get it for the extra Doom effect that it has. But anyways, that's the Soul Forge for now. As far as other things that we have, uh, let's go over all the teams. So, as far as teams are concerned, let's start all the way from the raids. So, of course, raids, as we mentioned before, is restricted to Drifting Sands. However, you also have to use the Horn Wing. The Horn Wing will give you double points, and it also has double magic this week, as well as a lot of things here having 20%, because I believe we have 10% to all monsters, and 10% to Drifting Sands, which means 20% to most things within the kingdom. Uh, it is also particularly relevant, because that means the Dervish Hero class, which is both a monster and a Drifting Sands troop, is 20% extra stats this week. So if you want 20% extra stats on your hero, make sure to use Dervish a little bit and then probably never use it again because it's not that viable for hero class. But this week it actually is a bit more viable due to all the event stuff. But anyways, main premise here is the weapon I mentioned earlier. Uh, this is pretty good for most of the events this week just because uh, we have a lot of Drifting Sands restrictions and obviously boost ratios from a whole team of Drifting Sands. So very beneficial there. Uh, ends up creating a bunch of brown and uh, yellow, which a lot of troops here end up utilizing. Hornwing, you just throw it onto the boss troop and insta-kill it as you would with pretty much any of them. It also has a little bit of a gem destroy. Uh, as far as Queen Beatrix, it does what it normally does. Cleanse if you end up needing it, which you probably won't need too much, but it's mostly just to do an extra turn into a little bit of green and brown. 
Uh, the green feeds back into itself, the brown feeds into your entire team. And if you really get excess green, it'll also feed into your topaz. And of course, topaz here just needs to give you a little bit extra yellow magic, starts you with a yellow storm, and just a nice little AoE to keep poking them down with. If you also get into a sticky situation, also has a bit of score reduction, so it shouldn't ever really die. Though I highly doubt they're going to be getting that far into the team, uh, unless they start insta-kill like stuff, which I guess could, they technically could. Anyways, as far as the uh, lower range of raids, you basically just want to build entirely around Beatrix. Ideally, we'd want even more Beatrix on this team, but we have to use the Hornwing. So, of course, same premise. Hornwing goes and one-shots the boss. We're using the cheaper weapon, which you get from the event itself. If you just put 250 gems into the event this week, you're already going to have this. This allows you to have resummon, so your team will end up being whatever you resummon. The Emerald Baton, Hornwing, and Queen Beatrix, and that should be perfectly fine to go kill everything with. I'm using Archer here, though you can go opt for a safer hero class like elemental or sort of such, uh, or if you end up needing to spell for whatever reason, you can end up going with, uh, oh gosh, why do I forget the name of that one class? Uh, da, 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 the one beast class, uh, Warden. Yeah, <laughs> I just remembered it right before we got here because of how deep it is. But uh, yeah, the Warden here class is both Dispel and Greenstorm. I'm just using Archer because it has 50% Mana Star and Greenstorm, but it does not have Dispel, so if we are up against some Submerge, which I don't think we will be, but if we happen to be, um, you can end up going down that route and just switch out your hero class to make it a little bit easier to hit everything. Next, we have ourselves the faction event. This faction event is for that of the Deep Hive. Deep Hive is a brown green restriction. So, for the lower range, we can run a Marilith team. We can run uh, Guards Avatar. Uh, we show Guards Avatar so often, I figured I'd just put the Marilith team here. I mean, the uh, Rowane team here, though it does have Marilith. Uh, of course, uh, one base that you could do for a lot of teams here is Marilith, uh, Marilith plus Leprechaun. Basically, just run something in first slot, Marilith something that's a damage source, Leprechaun. And you're pretty much good to go. The main reason I have Marilith a little bit lower is so we can get those quick kill Rowanes in there. But of course, in a different format, like something like this. Uh, Hiking Iron got in Soul Forge this week. Uh, we end up going with the Marilith second, the Leprechaun fourth, and then you just put two damage sources in. Either Hero in first slot if you don't have anything better, and then your main damager in third slot. And a uh, pretty similar premise to the other team. Uh, we're just using Hiking Iron Guff for the Devour. Uh, this for Curse and Insta Kill. Uh, Marilith for all of our mana accumulation needs. And Leprechaun for the initial mana just to burst everything up, as well as a little bit of Green Link, which feeds into almost everything, except the Iron Gut itself. Next, we have the Pure Faction. There are two ways to run this. You could either run it four Beatrix if you feel like you have enough durability to not lose, or you can run one Scarab Knight into three Beatrix. Scarab Knight ends up gaining a bunch of armor and barrier, so you have that. has a little bit of extra turn potential, has 50% score reduction. It's going to be really good at not dying. Uh, however, you mostly just want to keep spamming Queen Beatrix until you win. has a lot of true damage, does, creates a bunch of green and brown, has extra turn chance not off of only the green and brown, but also a 40% chance automatically. And also has cleanse if you have to deal with any status effects. Like if you get Death Marked, or if you get Frozen, or anything, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you do have to worry about Stun, because that will stun it out, but unless they stun all of them simultaneously, uh, the other Beatrixes will just cleanse for your other Beatrixes. And you either run four of them, or three into a Scarab Knight. Scarab Knight being the safer method, four of them being the quicker method, if you feel like you have enough durability. Uh, next we have Underspire. Underspire is a very similar restriction to the Raid event, with the main caveat being you do not have to use the Raid Troop. So this opens up being able to just use spam more of the same troop. So, of course, for raids, we had to be a little bit more diverse with the team. Whereas for Underspire, we could just spam whatever the most broken thing is that we have access to. In this case, if you have a billion Topaz, you just run a billion Topaz and using the weapon in order to feed them. And in the case of the uh, lower range, of course, we do the same thing just with Beatrix. And this weapon you just get for 250 gems this week, so really easy to obtain this week. You're probably already doing that to help out your guild for the event. And uh, then you just use that as your resummon option, and then your team just becomes whatever you resummon. The Baton, and then Double Queen Beatrix, which that alone should be way more than enough. Honestly, one Beatrix is probably enough to solo everything, as long as it gets lucky enough. Next, we have ourselves the Dervish class event, the final team here. So, this is a restriction of not only Drifting Sands, but monsters specifically from Drifting Sands, which also all have 20% stats this week. So, for this, we're just running with the Sand Runner. Given that we only need to do the lower range just to claim our 25 free gems, uh, we are just going to be running this with a very quick kill um, Sand Runner. He has 75% mana start and has a pretty decent amount of burst damage. Also really good if we have to deal with that 100% revive troop, as these three alone will always be able to go and just kill that out. And of course, we're just using a full AoE weapon. If you don't have Dawnbringer, you put whatever else here. Black Manacle, Deathbringer, you know, um, even that Ruby weapon we got the other week, uh, though it was paywalled. Um, but whatever you have that can hit all enemies, very strong. Just put that there and just spam Sandrunner. Honestly, you could probably even get away with four Sandrunner if you really wanted to, but still put the hero there for some kind of AoE weapon, with Black Manacle being the most accessible there. And of course, uh, while we don't specifically have them here, uh, we will be doing um, Volt Grind this weekend. So of course, we have like the Rowane team that we showed earlier, that you probably want to put in a Mirage Queen instead of Merilift, just so it has a 50% mana start. We have the Sister Superior Dust Devil with the double Iron Knock if you have access to it. We have the single Dust Devil Quick Kill, which you mostly use for verse farming. And uh, actually, I do still have the Rowane team here, and this is like the classic Rowane that you would use. Uh, either Urskia Shield or Black Manacle, Rowane, Leprechaun, and Mirage Queen. 
So any of these three teams is what you would most likely be using to farm. Of course, there are other ones. Like if you want to do a higher level mid-range explorer, like explorer like five, six, seven, eight, somewhere around there with like a Phoenicia or something similar, like a Diamantina. But for the most part, uh, these three should be enough to get you through the entirety of the Vault Weekend this weekend. If you guys still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. And hopefully tomorrow we will be in version 7.2 later in the day. And uh, yeah, we'll go over all that on the nightly stream as we always do at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is kind of convenient because that's probably almost exactly when the update will likely happen tomorrow. I'll catch you guys then. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching.